Okay, in this section, we're going to be exploring modulus function notation. In particular, we're going to be looking at the piecewise definition for the modulus function. So with a piecewise function, we can define separate rules for different intervals of the graph. In this case, when x is bigger than or equal to zero, the mod of x is just x. All that means is that if you put a positive number into the modulus function, the output is just the number. It doesn't change it. But if you put in a number that is less than zero, the modulus function will take that value and it will make it positive. Next, we'll think about the domain and range of the modulus function. Just pause the video for a second and have a think. What do you think the domain and range of the modulus function is? So for the domain, we can put any number that we like into the modulus function. So the domain is any real number. For the range, we've already discussed that any negative inputs will be made into positive values, but we can put zero in and get an output of zero. So the range is any value bigger than or equal to zero. In this example, we're going to be looking at piecewise notation in a bit more detail. So for each of the functions you can see, we're going to write them using piecewise notation. We'll start with a, which is mod of x minus four. Before I write it in piecewise notation, I'm going to identify the vertex. The vertex is the value of x, which will make inside the modulus brackets zero. So in this case, there's a vertex at x equals four, because four minus four equals zero. That tells us our piecewise notation will consist of two intervals. X is bigger than or equal to four, and x is less than four. So when x is bigger than four, inside the modulus bracket will be positive. And so taking the mod of it will not change the value. That means in that section, my function is simply x minus four. If we put a value of x in that's less than four, that means inside the brackets will be negative. And that means the modulus function will be making it positive. So we'll no longer have x minus four, we would have minus x plus four. But typically we would instead write that as four minus x. Let's have a go at part B. We've got mod of three x plus five. That tells us there is a vertex at minus five thirds. So our two intervals this time are x is bigger than or equal to minus five thirds and x is less than negative five thirds. When x is bigger than or equal to minus five thirds, inside the brackets will be positive, And so the modulus function won't change it. Therefore here we get three x plus five. If we use a value of x less than minus five thirds, then what we get inside the brackets will be negative and the modulus will be making it positive. That means in this region, we would have minus three X minus five. Finally, in part C, we have mod of X minus one and then separately plus five. The vertex is only related to the modulus part. So here we have a vertex at X equals one. So our two intervals are x is bigger than or equal to one, or x is less than one. When x is bigger than or equal to one, inside the brackets is positive, so the modulus function has no effect. Therefore we have x minus one plus five. That gives us x plus four. It's a bit more complicated when x is less than one, because that makes the modulus negative. That means in here, what we really have is one minus x. Let's just write down a calculation at the side. Here we're going to have one minus x plus five. So we have one plus five is six, and then we have a minus x. Right, here are a few examples for you to have a go at them. Pause the video and then come back and check your solutions against mine. Welcome back, here's my solution then. 
If you got all of these right, well done. If you want, skip the next part of the video. However, if you got any of them wrong and you're not sure why, I'm going to go through my solution now. Right, in part A we have mod of 2x minus 1. That means the vertex is at x equals a half. So our intervals, our x is bigger than or equal to 1 half. Or x is less than 1 half. When x is bigger than or equal to 1 half, inside the brackets is positive, so the modulus doesn't change it. When x is less than a half, then that would make the brackets negative, so we'll get minus whatever's inside. Here we have 1 minus 2x. In part B, we have a vertex at x equals minus 5. So we have two intervals, x is bigger than or equal to minus 5, or x is less than minus 5. When x is bigger than or equal to minus 5, Inside the brackets is positive, so the modulus doesn't change it. We have 4 plus x plus 5, which is x plus 9. If x is less than minus 5, inside the brackets is negative, so it will change the sign of it. So one way you might write this is 4 minus x plus 5. If we remove the brackets, we get minus x and minus 5. So that gives us minus x, and then we have 4 minus 5, which is minus 1. Finally, in part C, we have a vertex at x equals minus 2. So our intervals are x is bigger than or equal to minus 2, or x is less than minus 2. When x is bigger than or equal to minus 2, inside the brackets is positive, so the modulus function doesn't change it. You may find in this case, it's helpful to write it using brackets. We've got 3 minus, in a bracket, x plus 2. So the x will become negative, but so will the 2. So we've got 3 minus 2, which is 1, and then minus x. For the other interval, when x is less than minus 2, that means inside the brackets is negative, And so that will flip the sign. So for this part, we essentially have 3 plus x plus 2, which gives us x plus 5. 